We're gonna go and see if we can get a tour of the of the mine. So we. That makes a really good souvenir. You may have noticed as we've started to come down into the mine that the temperature has dropped. It does remain at a. Eating my breakfast, <laughs> mango and watermelon. So that's the plan. We'll see you there, guys. in here I don't know, we are looking for like a... A tour or something here. Yeah, like a tour. We're gonna have a coffee. Uh, coffee we'll say we have water. a look later, guys. The game's failed. can buy a uh, gemstones here guys that's why a lot of shops selling here that's just only the small shop like you have the small post office and I think this is the pub and we want to go there a coffee shop here we want for we want coffee Robyville uh, This is the coffee shop Hopefully it's open That makes a really good souvenir We started the shop in 1988 Because we found we were evaluating the best set Yep We're gonna go and see if we can get a tour of the of the mine. So where are um, we now? The heritage, heritage. village. Uh, miners heritage. Miners heritage. Oh yeah. So we found it. Yep. It's absolutely fantastic stuff for making pottery and bricks out of. You'll notice the scrape marks and holes on the walls. You're going to see this right throughout the entire mine. These are caused from the jackhammers when they were digging the mine out. Alrighty, we'll keep going. Now you may have noticed as we started to come down into the mine that the temperature has dropped. It does remain at a constant 22 to 25 degrees all year round under here. So Miners Heritage was first started in 1982 with the idea of opening it up as a working and tourism mine, which they did do in 19 actual airflow under here. These shafts are put down by what is known as a cord wheel drill. You're going to see what that is shortly in the DVD. If you look down in the ground, you'll notice that bucket there. Now that bucket is six foot deep and it holds two ton or 2,000 kilos of dirt. They actually used that bucket when they were digging parts of this mine out. It would get filled up, lifted back up through the shaft, oh, emptied yeah. out and sent back down again. And just in the wall here, we've got a couple of those jackhammer bits. They've left them there so you can see what's made all the... If you look at this tunnel here, you'll notice how they've started to dig up around the corner. They've stopped and started to backfill it. 
The reason they've done this is that they've hit the boundary of their mining claim, which is something you do need to be extremely wary of when you're underground mining. Now, most people so, say, well, how do you know where your boundaries are? Which is a fair enough question, because above ground, you've got your four white posts which depict your boundaries, so you know you don't mine outside of them. You can't see them when you're underground. These days, with modern technology, it has become slightly easier. However, prior to this, what they needed to do is they needed to have a map with the coordinates of their four white posts. When they went underground, they needed that map and a compass, and that was how they could work out their boundaries. It is very important because if you do get caught mining over... We've got the names left on Vale, haven't got the same ring as Ruby Vale, so they're right to clean their left at Ruby Vale. Absolutely. <laughs> Now the area that we have come to now is my favourite part of this tour because this area here has got so much history to it. So back in 1902, a gentleman by the name of Charles Hagen, him and his family were over in Claremont mining for gold when they heard they were finding coloured stones over here. So Charles packed his family up and moved them over here and Charles and two of his mates are the first people to start down there you're 17 metres underground. Now when you say 17 metres it doesn't sound a long way but if you see it it actually is. So if you mm. want you can go down there and look up the ladder. Just be aware that little particles can fall down so just watch your eyes. Now that is how sapphire miners still yeah. to this day get in and out of their mining claims if I climb up and down those ladders. Take picture. <laughs> so, I think here you can buy a bucket of wash $25. And yeah. Maybe they have a bucket here. No, you got to keep going, eh? That's exactly right. Yeah, I'll break it. what you got to do. So you can buy a one bucket, guys, or one bag. $35 for one bag. And $25 per bucket. And then you're going to wash here. So, yeah. We don't know if we're gonna buy bug or one bucket. Oh, it has a stone already in there. Yeah, it's already stone already in there, so that's why it's $35. But I'm not sure the bucket. It's only $5 okay. difference. But I so, yeah, that's it. Our mining yeah, tours. Yeah. yeah, I did already. It's only $20 per person right man so yeah you want to cost you 30 what is that you want to get a classic i think it's 30 dollars yeah dude and then the kids coming also uh there's a big bus load of kids coming yeah so oh, yeah, it's very nice another adventure today at don't lose the house, it's very nice so. home. Uh, and then, and this one is just like old caravan. Hi guys! We're heading home now. It's already 4.25 in the afternoon. And I'll start driving here. <laughs> Yeah, we have a long drive. This truck's a bit of a blocky. This way and there. 